Now, I want to bring in Elsa Anderson. She was the former press secretary to the Queen. And, and Elsa, we heard the prime minister say this was a huge shock to the nation, to the world, and yet you have a monarch, a queen who is 96 years old, and yet it was still shocking. Uh, she carried out her duties until the very end. Talk a little bit about your experience with the queen and, and what motivated her and, and what she most wanted out of her reign. I think her sense of duty, you know, I, I'm astounded at the moment. I, you know, I feel very emotional about the Queen's passing. And I think however old somebody is and however much you expect it, it is still, it is still incredibly upsetting. And it's amazing how many people who used to work with me and, with, and for her who've been in touch now saying how devastated they are. So the outpouring of grief sorry, and, and, and love for the Queen, I think, knows no bounds. Um, you know, we will not see another female sovereign, certainly in, in our lifetimes. We have King Charles now, we will have Prince William, we will have Prince George. So in the embodiment of female power um, that the Queen, I mean, she was an inspiration. She, you know, she was a, a, a leading working mother, you know, an inspiration for me as a, as a, as a working mother. Um, I think the, the world will take time to come to terms with this. Um, you know, she, she was the nation's grandmother, she was the nation's great grandmother. And I think it's going to take time to, 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 to settle in, to actually, uh, you know, to come to accept it. It certainly will for me. Elsa, it's incredible if I could stay with you here to, to listen to you. And like you said, she's 96. Um, there's been so much talk about her health issues, but still it comes as this type of shock. Look, she, she certainly here in the United States, um, I think she's, absolutely she is admired, but she is the, the mother, the grandmother, the great-grandmother uh, to Britain. And I was listening to the uh, prime minister a short time ago, Liz Truss, used this word, called her the rock upon which uh, Great Britain was built, and also said she is the spirit of Britain, and that came back to my mind as I listened to you um, almost try to, to make it through your answer, if you will, because you all are impacted. Um, the world is going to mourn, but for you, what does spirit of Britain, what does that mean? I think it's, it's the, we've not known anything different. It's the continuity. It's when we've just gone through two years of a pandemic we have economic downturn. We have a war with Russia and Ukraine. And she was our constant. She was our rock. She was you know, the, the, the person we knew that would not let us down. Um, and I do think that the world is just going to, to, to wake up to the fact that she's not there anymore. You know, not only was she our head of state, but she was you know, a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother. She was the Supreme Governor of the Church of England. She was the head of the armed forces. There were so many other facets to the Queen. And it's going to take time for us to realise that what we've been used to has gone. Has gone. And, and Elsa, you know, we, we talk about the Queen and her, and her duty and her incredible passion to serve her people. And we see her as a world leader, and we see all that she's done, the, the, the rock, yes, of, of Great Britain, and certainly for so many around the world. But you knew her on a personal level. You were her press secretary. Talk about Elizabeth, the woman, the, the woman you knew and loved and served on a personal level. I, I'd love to hear your reflections and maybe some of your fondest memories of Queen Elizabeth II. I think her, her kindness, I think her amazing ability, even after being on the throne for 70 years, she could still find something on a pretty, maybe fundamental engagement, something pretty standard. She will come back and she will stand there and say, did you hear that little boy say something about his teacher? Or did you hear what the professor said? Or you know, there was always something. There was always something that the Queen would find that was interesting and new, even after 70 years on the throne. Um, so I think that was remarkable. Her, her sense of humour, her kindness. You know, we would all get a gift at Christmas. She would always remember something. I remember um, the state visit by President and Mrs Obama, um, and we were standing at a reception, 
and the Queen was walking towards me with President Obama, and she said, Mr. President, I want to introduce you to my press secretary. Her husband is in the Navy. And I thought, my golly, I just couldn't believe it. The Queen took her time out to introduce the President of the United States to me, you know, just you know, one of her household. And that's just another element of extraordinary kindness and generosity that she kept on, kept on displaying. Uh, Elsa, it was incredible to hear you say that. She's the person we knew that would not let us down. That's a great point to make with so much turmoil um, in the world and what we've seen certainly with this pandemic over the past two, three plus years. Thank she you. is that constant and uh, it's unbelievable to think that she is not uh, going to be there um, anymore. Um, as we take a shift, yes, as we, there's a new monarch, but, but Elsa, what what change could we possibly see now in Great Britain? How will, will culture, how will society there, how will the country start to look some kind of different because of who is now on the throne? I think the Prince of Wales will be a remarkable king, a remarkable monarch. He's been a remarkable Prince of Wales. Um, I think he's got his own ideas about shaping the monarchy, slimming it down. Um, he's got his own interests, but I, I'm incredibly confident for the future and what he will give to this country and to the nation and to the world. So I have got absolutely no doubts about that whatsoever. I'm, I'm curious. He had, the, he had the greatest role model in his mother. <laughs> exactly. And you had a front row seat to that. And if you would talk a little bit about, because obviously the Queen had the utmost faith in her son, but what was their relationship like? What did you see behind the scenes? Well, I, obviously, I, I only worked for the Queen. I didn't work for the Prince of Wales, but certainly an incredibly warm, caring relationship between both of them. Um, the Prince of Wales did more and more commitments and duties um, during the latter part of the Queen's reign. So a lot more of a, you know, a team effort, sort of team monarchy, I suppose you could call it, which is, you know, charming to see. Um, so you could see that warmth between both of them. And, you know, even at the Diamond Jubilee concert, when the Prince of Wales called the Queen, Your Majesty, and then Mummy, you know, <laughs> which got a huge chuckle from the Queen and, and from the audience as a whole. Um, so you know, he's, he's learned from the best, and I know he will be an outstanding monarch to this country. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.